U.S. military planners believed that air superiority had to be won for the air and ground campaigns to succeed. The first phase of the air superiority battle was fought by fighter aircraft like this F-15 Eagle of the first tactical fighter wing. The fighters flew combat air patrols, nicknamed CAPS, to protect wild weasels and attack planes from Iraqi fighters. The U.S. Air Force's F-15s were joined in their mission by Saudi F-15s, British Tornadoes, and U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcats. Their potential opposition was the more than 400 Iraqi fighters, including sophisticated Soviet-built MiG-29 Fulcrums and French-built Mirage F-1s. Iraqi air forces never challenged coalition forces for control of the skies. Captain Steve Tate was involved in one of the first dogfights of the war in the early morning hours of the 17th of January. We were in the, uh, I took a four ship uh, F-15s up on the first wave that went up to uh, Baghdad area last night, took off at uh, 1.30. Uh, we were basically supporting a CAD package of uh, a bunch of wild weasels. Uh, and a bunch of F-15Es and a, all, just an assortment of other airplanes, EF-111s and F-111s that were going up to the uh, southeast portion of Baghdad. Uh, basically what our job was, go up there and uh, remove all the air-to-air -air threats for uh, them. The mission lasted about four hours. Uh, we started an uh, engagement. I got the contact that AWACS calls out as a hostile chasing uh, my number three man. And at about the same time, I'm turning back around towards the uh, east. Uh, when I turn back around, I get a contact on a, uh, on a contact that isn't squawking our IFS, so when I lock this guy up, I can tell that he's not a, uh, a friendly airplane. Uh, uh, comes to find, come to find out that uh, it's an F-1. He's at about 8,000 feet headed west towards Baghdad, towards my number three and four uh, men also, and uh, we EID him as hostile. About 12 miles, I take a uh, Fox-1, a radar missile. Um, everything's looking good. Uh, thinking about taking another Fox 1, but uh, no kind of uh, interference or anything like that, so I just let uh, one Fox 1 go. And about uh, four miles in front of me, uh, get a huge fireball. When he blew up, I could see a piece of the airplane blowing up. Um, obviously, it was at night. I couldn't see if a parachute or anything like that. It was a huge fireball. I don't anticipate anybody getting out of that. The only Iraqi fighters to appear in significant numbers were the MiG-29 Fulcrum and the Mirage F-1. The Iraqis put up very little resistance during the air campaign, and in total, 35 Iraqi fighters were shot down during the conflict. There were no Allied losses as a result of air-to-air -air combat. Well, so far it's been a big surprise that the Iraqi Air Force has not done anything, basically. They've come up to be shot down. Uh, apparently, most of the aircraft are underground. And at the first week of the war, we're hearing things from the military briefers that 80% of the aircraft are still intact uh, in hardened shelters. Therefore, it's been a non-player. And uh, the dogfights have been fairly straightforward. Uh, go to the 6 o'clock and shoot them down. The only double kill of the war has been a Saudi pilot who caught two F-1s with Exocet. He apparently had no trouble in downing them both. This is what the Saudi F-15 pilot saw through his gun sight during the dogfight. Target! Bandit! Bandit! Sega 2-0, confirm bandit. That's a firm! Bandit! Bandit! MiG-29 is an exceptionally capable airplane. It is uh, 
right now, in my opinion, the finest dogfighter that the Soviets have produced in the modern generation. But it's the training that drives this war so far. And you can put an ill-trained pilot in a very capable airplane and put him up against a well-trained pilot in an old airplane, and the well-trained pilot always wins. It is almost always the case that training makes the difference. So it tells me that they're not using the capability of the airplane. We've shot down 10 plus, apparently, big 29s, and they have not been big maneuvering fights. They've just been classic, uh, sort of get on his rear end and he, he isn't doing a whole lot and you shoot him down. So I don't think we're seeing what the airplane could really do. The other side of the air superiority battle was the destruction of the Iraqi air bases. Many of the Iraqi aircraft were protected inside hardened concrete bunkers. Rather than laboriously destroy each bunker, the taxiways leading from the bunkers to the main runways were cut using anti-runway weapons. This dangerous mission was the specialty of the British tornado squadrons using JP-233 munitions dispensers. The JP-233 munitions dispensers dropped dozens of sub-munitions on runways, putting them out of operation. The two British tornado squadrons suffered a higher loss rate than other elements of the coalition air force. Five tornadoes were lost in combat during the first two weeks of the war, in no small measure due to their hazardous assignment. The tornadoes flew their missions using a terrain-following radar. The pilots and their navigators cannot see the ground below. They must rely entirely on their instruments. By the third week of the war, with remnants of the Iraqi Air Force fleeing to Iran, the tornadoes shifted their tactics away from the anti-runway mission to other types of strikes. Here, one of the squadrons is loaded with conventional bombs for attacks on Iraqi ammunition and missile supplies. It's a very dynamic war, this one, so every single day we are looking at our tactics and trying to preserve the element of surprise. And it's quite natural that we are changing our tactics, attack headings and heights and so on. And uh, it's not just a direct result. In fact, if you look at the number of sorties we've flown overall, the losses are extremely small indeed, much smaller than anybody actually had predicted. So this is just the nature of this type of warfare. The Tornado GR-1 ground attack squadrons were supported by the Tornado F-3 interceptor squadrons. The F-3 version is a high-performance fighter armed with air-to-air -air missiles rather than bombs. The F-3 tornadoes flew combat air patrols to prevent the interception of the ground attack squadrons by Iraqi fighters. French attack squadrons in the Gulf used the Jaguar strike fighter. The Jaguars were armed with a variety of weapons, including conventional bombs and rockets, and the precision attack AS-30L missile. This is a laser-guided missile which strikes targets illuminated by a laser designator carried by the Jaguar fighter. This gun camera footage shows an Iraqi hangar being destroyed by an AS-30L missile. Top cover for their missions came from the Mirage 2000 fighters of the 5th Fighter Squadron we see here. Workhorse of the United States Air Force strike units in Desert Storm was the F-111. The F-111 pilots of the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing were no strangers to combat, having led the attacks on Libya in 1986. 
The F-111 squadrons were used in night attack missions where pinpoint accuracy was essential. Using a paved tack pod, the F-111 